NASCAR needs to drop old school race fans. Yeah. I'd like to hear what this guy would have to say. Let's talk about it. Three, two, one. What's up, everyone? Todd Brown, That Racing Show. Thanks for dropping by for this pit stop segment. Man, here we are, 2024. Cheers to you. Let's pop a top and uh, let's break in this new season. I just want to say I thank everybody who's uh, stuck around through the show. And uh, sorry for my absence. Got the flu there for a little bit. Had some other things going on. It just, uh, hey, but I'm back now. <laughs> Feeling much damn better and uh, got through the holidays. Hope everybody had a great holiday as well. But uh, yeah, man, let's talk about this subject right here because this is something that, um, you know, I mean, I know it's kind of a deal, kind of a big deal to some people, but I didn't really know it was that big of a deal. But apparently it is. Um, and this is the old school fans and new school, I guess what you call them, fans. Um, all these labels floating around out here. But anyways, I, I, first off, I just want to start out with this by saying, um, man, Kel Yarbrough. I mean, that man, is it's, uh, he was such an asset to the NASCAR series, to race fans, to memories, to, um, to so many. And uh, definitely a champion who's going to live on forever. I'm sad to see him go, but I am I'm so thankful that he was a part of this earth and uh, gave us what he gave us. And uh, I'm, I want to share one quick story right fast. And um, and this kind of goes in line with what the subject of this uh, episode is about. But um, just a few years ago, I'm going to say probably about 2017 or 2018, I was on a film set, a commercial set, actually, with uh, Ron Rivera for the Carolina Panthers. And we were filming in downtown Charlotte. And um, if anybody's ever been around the film community, there's a lot of the same people on shoots uh, from PAs to grips to just everybody that works on the crew anyways. And a lot of these people do a lot of the NASCAR commercials and now had uh, different people showed up on set. They would obviously know who they were immediately because they follow them through the commercials and other things like that. But on this particular day, there was a, uh, a voice that I heard that come from behind me that uh, was asking for directions to a place and nobody on set would, really even give them the time of day for the most part. But me personally, as soon as I heard the voice, I didn't even, I didn't have to look to see who it was because Kale Yarrow had this voice to him. Everything about him was kind of one of the kind. And, um, you know, when I, when I heard his voice, I turned around, I knew exactly who it was. And it was him and his wife coming through and they were looking for a place to eat, I think it was. But anyways, uh, that's the memories. That's the history of NASCAR right there. To somebody like me, when uh, so many of the younger generations that work on the film crews and all this, they just know the people that they see now and work with and what's on television now. And that's why I think that NASCAR history is so great. And I think there's just such a value in all the old school fans and racers. And uh, I love that NASCAR still embodies that. And I think it's something that they need to continue to do for many years to uh, just show what the roots of racing really were. But anyways, so sad to hear the passing of Kale, but once again, uh, man, so glad that he got to walk this earth and share his talents with us. Now, yeah, let's get on to the subject here because I ran across this article back in November, um, and it was kind of interesting to me because it's it's by a racing publication, I guess is what it is. I'm not really that big familiar with them, but uh, anyways, it stirred a lot of comments and a lot of different things, and it was basically the guy who wrote it was a younger um NASCAR fan, I guess I did a little research on him and found out that like his uh, his arrival into the sport was in Jeff Gordon's heyday is when he really started following it, uh, obviously like early 30s. But um, he had a lot of things to say kind of bad about the old school fans. And uh, I'm not going to say it pissed me off, but it kind of just made me say, hey, sit in your place and do your thing and, and just let everybody have their own place in this. Because basically the way it come out was saying that old school fans suck and don't need to be involved in NASCAR in any way. Um, I'm just going to take a few things here that was said about it. Um, basically said that NASCAR bends over backwards to accommodate the old school fans. Uh, called the old school fans boomers. Man, quit putting these titles on people. There's enough titles out here on everybody as it is. And, you know, race fans are race fan. I don't care if you're six months old or 60 years old, whatever. Race fan is a race fan. Doesn't need to have any more titles to it. But, um... Honestly, went on to say it's time that NASCAR drops old school fans because uh, these fans are killing the sport. 
Jesus. Old school fans are killing the sport. Old school fans who um, supported NASCAR for so many years still support NASCAR, which according to him, they don't. But uh, yeah, yeah, we do. And uh, but just said that there's there's um, no loyalty from old school fans. And it was time for NASCAR to not be loyal to old school NASCAR fans. Um, and uh, and basically went on to say other things like that every time NASCAR introduces something new, that everybody's all about it, gets great ratings and all this stuff. And, you know, that's obviously, yeah, anytime something new does come out, people are going to check it out. It's no different than when something new comes out of the store or, a, you know, a new ride comes out. People are going to go check it out. It doesn't mean that they're going to continue buying into it or it doesn't mean that they're going to continue looking at it or appreciating it. Um, and that's where I, I want to get into the subject so much because I think there's so much room for new fans and old fans. And I don't think it's it's cool to be biased towards uh, any group because if you're somebody that's doing racing publications or putting something out here like this right here, like what I do, uh, I want to be accommodating to new fans and to older fans. I want to be somebody that can um, establish something for them to, to somebody new, to maybe show them something new. Um, and that's why I love Stapleton on here. I mean, what this guy does is so cool, with the history that he brings. And, um, you know, you look at it right now with the Winston Cup Museum closing. That's something that's being taken away from so many future generations of people. Um, these cars are going to be auctioned off and, and they're going to go to different places. But at one point, this was all together and uh, could have been something for more generations to appreciate and go check out. Now it's gone, and it's not time to erase NASCAR history, and it's especially not time to erase NASCAR fans from the historical days because these guys, man, they got the best stories out there. I'm going to tell you, there's there's no better racing stories than you'll hear from them from somebody who was there in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. I mean, even people that just come into it up into the early 2000s, these stories are great, and a lot of the people that tell these stories are a lot of people that were involved in it or their family members were crew members or things of that nature. And uh, the longevity of these fans being a part of the sport is what is actually going to help continue building this sport because, uh, man, they're, they're huge assets. And that's fans, drivers, everybody alike. But, um, you know, to follow up with some of the things that, that this gentleman said here was he's obviously a big, huge fan of the Chicago race, uh, to him, it sounded like it was the greatest event ever happened <laughs> in the history of racing. And, you know, again, I'll go back and I'll say, yeah, it was cool. It's cool to see something different. And, uh, you know, there was fans, old school fans that didn't like it, said we didn't need to go there. But I think a lot of them checked it out. And I think it's a welcoming thing to, to most groups. Um, but a lot of this guy's topic was that when changes come along with NASCAR, the old school fans bitched and complained and uh quit watching i mean there was even something in there about them that most uh old old school fans don't watch but like uh five races a year or something like that don't go to races and all these things but you know i gotta say from my personal aspect i see a lot of people that i knew that, that used to go to races that still go to races they're still uh, involved with it whether it's watching at home or um or still hanging out with the old crew members and, and people that they were around during that time and, and i think this is this is just so cool and the younger generation is going to have their history, just like all this right here. And for me personally, like moving to North Carolina in 1981, you know, I, I spent my first race at North Wilkesboro. I was at Rockingham. I was at Charlotte. I was everywhere back then. Um, and those are memorable times to me that are really impactful in my life. Part of the reasons why I'm still involved in everything and still do stuff like this. And for the new generation that's coming in, yeah, Chicago is what North Wilkesboro was to me at that time. And uh, so for North Wilkesboro coming back to be part of the, the all-star race and everything else with that, uh, you know, man, that, that brings back so much nostalgia and brings some cool things. And you got to look at it for, for people who are new to the sport. This is a new racetrack. This is a new track. So it's great to do this in my opinion, because you're given new fans, a new racetrack and you're given the old school fans, some of the history, some of the memories. And, uh, you know, man, I mean, people went there. And I, I hope that the track is, is in such great shape this year and the race is going to be great. And I hope that it continues to lead to some other things, uh, particularly Rockingham. I would love to see Rockingham just come back because it was just a, a fun track. It was fun to be at. 
And uh, the state of North Carolina here has done so much to involve and invest in all these things happening that um, by by saying that that old school fans don't deserve these races or new fans don't deserve these races, um, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of a uh, man. It, it honestly, it's stupid, in my opinion, to say something like that because this is something that's really great for the sport. And I mean, if if everybody is going to accept you know, going to the Coliseum, Chicago, all the changes that are going on now, then these couple little changes aren't going to affect the uh, the new fans, I guess you should say. But um, like I say, man, I, I just think there's a place for everybody. And uh, I, I want everybody's opinion on this. This is something I really want to touch on. I really want you to give me your opinions back on this. Uh, do you think that it's time that NASCAR says, uh, yeah, you know, all you old fans that used to go to the races, well, we're not going to accommodate you anymore. We're going to just sail into the future with a new generation and uh, piss off, you know, because I don't think NASCAR is going to do that, for one, because NASCAR knows its history. They do make changes, and, um, you know, you have to accept the changes. Changes are good, uh, especially when it comes to the safety aspects. But, um, you know, man, I can't get on board with this dude's writing. I'm sorry. And, um uh, you know, I, I know people disagree with me on things, and that's perfectly okay. And I'm, like I say, I'm not, I'm not downing this guy. Everybody's entitled to their, their opinions and their positions, and I think that's cool. But um, no, it's just it's not my opinion, and it never will be because every bit of history has a place to be here. And uh, man, NASCAR has some of the best, some of the best out there. And if you, I mean, if you look at most sports, I mean, you got, you know, thirty some teams with thirty different players on a team and everything else. When you get to NASCAR. You got basically thirty six teams out there, and uh, at the rate it is right now, you're going to have very few superstars that are going to be remembered into the future. Uh, the way, it, not uh, Jesus, what am I saying? Unlike what it was back in the day, because back then, you know, you had the independents that uh, you followed and you you looked up to, and um, and you had your champions. You had so many that were just superstars in the sport, and I don't think it's going to be accommodating like that in the future. But, um, yeah, we need to cherish these people. And uh, I think Kale Yarbrough is an um, exclamation point on the end of this episode right here because um, old school racers, old school fans definitely have a place in the sport. And, um, man, I cherish you. Cherish you all. But, anyways, I'm back. Uh, like I say, man, hated to be away for a little bit, but uh, holidays were coming around. Got that damn bug right after Thanksgiving and put a hurting on me for a little bit and uh, figured, you know what? Why not just wait till 2024 and come back? So happy new year to y'all and uh, or all of y'all. And I uh, hope everybody's having a great day and hope you have a great year. Whew, like I said last time, so many cool things coming up and uh, getting back on it now. So please join me. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. Definitely throw them comments down below because, uh, man, I want to talk about this. I want your opinion. But anyways, hope everybody out there is having a great day today. As always, we'll see you at Checker Flag.